Hey, how's it going? Miles here, and welcome to this week's dry fire and live fire session. We are going to continue talking about transitions, now adding more details in regards to what our lower body is doing. Specifically, we're going to be talking about our hips today and how we ensure we have our proper natural point of aim when we're engaging multiple targets. So if you're interested, stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So we've been diving into details to multiple target engagements or target transitions. We talked about what our eyes should be doing, how we want to be prepared on arrival to take another shot and talked about, you know, not overshooting, undershooting our targets. And so that is primarily all upper body in the sense that we haven't been talking, what, what is our lower body doing? Now, naturally, you guys are going to be doing certain things to work on those transitions, and that's completely fine. On purpose, we're We've omitted those details because we want to address them specifically in different videos. And again, that baby step, one step at a time, progressive approach here. So now we're going to dive into what are we doing with our lower body. And specifically for this video, we are going to talk about how we ensure we have good natural point of aim. If you don't know what natural point of aim is, I will leave a link to a few videos we did up here or down there. We want to ensure we have natural point of aim when we transition to the next target. You may be already know, you know, doing this naturally when you've watched the previous videos, but now we're going to really dive into it to ensure you're doing it properly. So everything applies from previous weeks. We're not going to discuss what we're doing from one target to the next target in terms of what our trigger or finger is doing and our eyes are doing. But now we're going to take two targets down range and we're going to focus on what I'm doing with my hips. All right, I have uh, some targets down range here, but for the dry fire session and the live fire session, I'm just gonna be focusing on that far right paper target and this left target here that has a black stripe on the left side. So you do not really need a gun to do this, to do the dry fire for multiple target engagements working on your lower body, but it is helpful, of course, because you do want to build familiarity with your firearm. And of course, if you have the dry fire mag, get the, you know, those trigger presses in so that you are building good habits and good trigger control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on one target. I'm starting on this furthest right target right now, okay? We are gonna transition to the next target, but what we wanna do is ensure our hips are going to be facing that target. Now I know it sounds simple, and it is actually simple, but for some people it is not easy to do because what happens is they are going to just move their upper body. Notice how my hips are facing you right now. They will literally just move their upper body and their hips are still facing the camera here. So what you wanna do here is ensure, you can start off slow. I'm looking at a small spot on my original target here, okay? And for now you don't even have to take any shots for the dry fire session right here. I'm going to look at my next target, leading with my eyes, which forces my body to turn, but notice I'm also turning my hips, okay? I'm gonna go the other way now. I lead with my eyes. I'm looking through the corner of my eyes. That forces my entire body to follow. I'm looking at that spot the whole time, but notice how my hips are turning as well. If you understand natural point of aim, you understand why this is so important. I need to have my hips square to the target to ensure that if I had to point shoot, instinctive shoot, whatever you want to call it, shoot with an index, I increase the odds that I'm going to get an accurate shot, okay? So here I am again. I'm going to start on the left side here. I have my hips here. What I want to avoid is this. Notice how my hips are squared up with this left furthest target. Now notice this. Some people might just do this right here. They're turning their upper body. So it's still kind of like a tank turn, so to speak, but to really do the tank turn correctly, what we want to do is, again, turn our hips, okay? We'll talk about the legs later on, but let's just focus on the feet. Do what comes naturally for now with your feet, your knees, everything. So as you turn your hips towards the target, however your, your legs, lower body moves, that's fine for now, okay? Again, baby steps. So I'm here, I'm facing with my hips. Notice my hips are here. I might take one shot. I'm gonna reset and prep as I turn. Notice how my hips are here. And I take my next shot, okay? So you're gonna start off really slow for the dry fire. You're just working the hips and you can combine it with your trigger presses and everything else. 
Remember, this is assuming, you know, this is a dry fire a session assumes you are keeping everything else we've covered thus far in mind and implementing everything. Okay, so that's, I'm not going to repeat myself. Just make sure to check out the playlist below if you're new to this video here. So I'm here facing the target. I might take two shots. I'm going to talk this through so that you can, you know exactly what I'm thinking here and doing. I take two shots. Then I lean with my eyes. I've reset and prepped. My hips are turning. I... I'm going to slow down at the 10%, so I'm gliding to the next target and break the last shot, okay? Then I could do the same thing. Now you can use any number of shots that you want. Two shots each target, one shot each target. The main thing is to focus on your hips for this week. Then as you get more comfortable, then you'll speed it up. Okay, what you wanna do is now add some speed. Do not overdrive or undershoot your target. And what you're going to do is when you get to your next target, check yourself. How do you do that? You check to see if your hips are squared facing your target. Once again, this is to establish our natural point of aim. So the dry fire session is relatively simple, unless uh, you are the type who does have that issue where you, you know, it doesn't come naturally to turn your hips. This is why we're doing this dry fire session. For those of you who understand this already, then no big deal. You can do other things for your dry fire session. You don't have to focus on this, but it is very important to always turn your hips. So now we're gonna do live fire and it's the same exact thing. We are turning our hips towards the target. And the main thing here is if you do everything correctly in dry fire, you won't have to worry so much about live fire. But once again, when we are shooting actual bullets, you know, there's a, a, there's a certain percentage of people who just get flustered and they completely forget the basics, even though this is very simple turning your hips, all right? And I just wanna reiterate before we get to the live fire, Whatever happens naturally with your legs, okay, below your hips, just let that work out, work itself out, and we'll talk more about that next week. But for now, focus on your hips. All right, we're ready for the live fire part of this video. We are going to engage the same targets. The target array is really up to you and uh, depends on your range and what you can do. You don't necessarily need wide targets like this or even wider or anything like that. If you're at an indoor range, um, it is going to be a little bit harder. Let's say you had one single lane, you're at an indoor range and you only have like one target. You still can exaggerate your hip movement. You can't see it, but there will be a little hip movement and add that into uh, your practice. So I'm going to start off on one target and engage the right target here. I wanna keep in mind everything in this series. So if this is simple for you, meaning you already know about the hips, this is just another opportunity for you to practice on everything we've covered, all the little details. So I'm gonna start with single shots and there's no timer here. The first iteration will just be one shot on the first target, okay? And I turn my hips to the next. I'm going slow on purpose, okay? And I have my finger on the trigger ready to take another shot, okay? So I'll do that again. And I'm at the next target, okay? I'm doing all the fundamentals here. Now, once you feel comfortable with that, you've stopped. So after I'm here, you've stopped and you've confirmed that you have your hips towards the next target. Okay, great. You might want to stick with the same speed. Now do the other way here. So I take one shot, turn my hips. My hips are at my second target, so that's good. After that, now you want to increase the speed, okay? So one shot, increase the speed to the next target. One shot, increase the speed to the next target. Don't take two shots yet. Next thing, you're going to do one shot on the second target. So it might be here, I'm gonna talk this one through. One, and then two. Okay, you would do the other side, okay? And once you feel comfortable with that, then you are going to speed it up. So it might be something like this. All right? Then after that, that's when you add another shot. The, it's going to be two shots first, and then end with one shot. So it would be two shots here, then one shot. Okay, you do that slow and then increase the speed, just like we did in the previous iterations. And then we continue this as I feel comfortable with two shots, one shots, then I do two shots, two shots. Then we progress, three shots, two shots. Once I'm comfortable with that, three shots, three shots, and so on and so forth. You don't necessarily have to go you know, beyond uh, you know, at crazy amounts, like maybe three shots, four shots. If you want to do a, a build drill, which is typically six shots, six shots and six shots, you know, that's probably the furthest I would go. Um, but you don't necessarily need to do that to work transitions. That would just be if you're working also recoil management, some other things, you know, but it's very simple drill here. Okay. Now, when you are more advanced and you progress, let's say you can do multiple shots, no problem. You're transitioning quickly. Your hips are always facing uh, the targets that you're engaging. You can do two things. 
add more targets and or use a timer, right? So that timer is going to give you the baseline and each subsequent rep, you want to meet that baseline or be faster while maintaining the same amount of accuracy. Once you add more targets, that changes things up too. So for example, here I have a target array. Not everyone's going to have this target array, but let's just pretend I'm going to shoot that paper target then those poppers here. You know, it's a little different and that just adds more dynamic, you know, it, it makes it more dynamic. So I might be the paper here, maybe single shot, one, the popper, popper. But notice every single time you watch the video, every single target that I shot at, my hips turned. Even those two poppers there, you'll see that you, there's still slight movement in my hips, even though they were close together. That wraps up today's video. It's all about turning your hips towards that target you want to shoot so that you have an established natural point of aim, which is going to dramatically increase your chances of landing an accurate shot. Even though it's simple, make sure you practice it, particularly if this is new to you. Don't think just because you watch it, it's simple, you're just automatically going to do it. A lot of people will end up just moving this without moving their hips, their, their upper body without the hips. So give it a try. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next week.